we are going to go through and learn about the different types of reactions that you may run into. What's nice about knowing about the types of reactions is it will help you eventually learn how to predict the products if you're told what type of reaction you have. So there are six different reaction types that we're going to look at. The first one is called synthesis reaction. The synthesis reaction occurs when you have two or more reactants that come together to so, uh, form a single product. So at the end of your reaction, you're going to notice that you only have one thing on the product side. A general equation with this would be an example of A plus B gives you AB, the compound. A and B are either an element or a compound. And AB will be a compound that is made from the A and B from the reactant side. So let's look at a few examples of synthesis. The other common name for synthesis is combination. You're combining the reactants into one thing. So uh, you might want to write that down, synthesis slash combination reactions. Example of a th synthesis reaction, calcium plus oxygen gas. When calcium and oxygen gas react, they form calcium oxide, CaO. Once they form CaO, the last thing you need to do is look at this and you need to determine, is it balanced? This equation isn't balanced, so we're going to balance it by putting a 2 in front of the calcium and a 2 in front of the calcium oxide on the product side. So notice here, you only have um, one compound. Um, it's not, this is one compound here. It is not the fact that you have um, a coefficient in front of it or not, but this is one type of compound. You do not have a plus side, a plus sign on your product side of the reaction. Okay, um, next we're going to look at Um, we're going to look at another example here. We have CO2 plus H2O. Both of these are compounds. And with carbon dioxide and water react, they form what is called carbonic acid or H2CO3. Notice here you have two things coming together to form one. We need to check and make sure it is uh, balanced. We have one carbon, one carbon, two, three oxygens, three oxygens, two hydrogens. This one's already balanced. So one thing to keep in mind, the key to a synthesis reaction is that it will make one product. Okay, the next type of reaction is called a decomposition and it is just that it decomposes. Um, this happens when you have a single compound. So it's going to be one thing on your reactant side and it will be broken down into two or more smaller compounds or elements. The general reaction here would be A, B yields A plus B. So notice you have no plus side on your reactant side, but you have a plus sign on your product side. A, B will be a compound, and A, B single will be either elements or compounds. Now, when we get to the point where you're predicting what the products are going to be, you will only predict that it will decompose into its elements. There's no way for you to know what compounds another compound will break down into. And we'll get into that when we look at predicting. Okay. Examples here, we have H2O. H2O will break down into its elements. Its elements are hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is always an H2 value. Oxygen is always an O2 value. Now this needs to be balanced because obviously there's only one oxygen on the reactant side and we have two on the product side. So we're going to put a two in front of H2O and two in front of the H2 and we're all nice and balanced. Another example would be calcium carbonate. This is an example where you won't know the products that it'll break down into. Calcium carbonate will break down into um, two things, one of them being a compound. Uh, if you were predicting this on your own, you would just break it into its elements, but calcium carbonate, when it breaks down, calcium carbonate is found in chalk, 
when it breaks down, it breaks down into calcium oxide, another compound, and uh, carbon dioxide gas. That carbon dioxide gas is what is released, um, uh, or you will see bubbling when calcium carbonate breaks down. Uh, this is already balanced. The key to this is you will see one reactant. Okay, we will see one reactant. Next is single replacement. Single replacement occurs when an uncombined element, so a single element, will take the place of another element that is a part of a compound. So the example is here is you have A plus BX yields AX plus B. So notice here A takes B's place in the compound and now B on the product side is alone. A and B are elements. Um, BX and AX are ionic compounds. What you need to make sure happens is that you balance the charges on both sides. So when A takes B's place, you need to reform the compound here um, by looking at the charges. Remember when we do ionic compounds, it's all based on the charges of the metal and the nonmetal. So make sure you're checking that. So here's an example. We have magnesium plus copper sulfate. Magnesium is going to come in here and take the place of the copper sulfate. Uh, what you want to know is that the single element will replace the same type of element in the compound. So the single element here is a metal. It will take the place of the metal in the compound. So Cu is the compound. Or the other way to look at it is magnesium will have a plus 2 charge as an ion. It will take the place of the positive ion in the compound, which would be copper. Okay, So positive will replace positive, negative will replace negative. So here we're going to get magnesium sulfate and copper will be by itself. Now magnesium is a plus, let's see here, over here copper, this is a plus 2, here is a minus 2. So notice there's no subscripts here. Magnesium sulfate, magnesium when it becomes an ion is a plus 2 and sulfate is a minus two. So there's no change in uh, the subscripts here either because they balance each other out. So one thing to keep in mind. Okay, down here, same thing. We have iron and copper sulfate. Again, the iron will take the place of copper sulfate. In this instance, iron is a plus two as well. So since it is a plus two and sulfate is a minus two, there will be no subscripts here. All right, finally we have Cl2 plus Ki. This is where you need to um, double check and make sure that you are replacing the correct things. Chlorine, when chlorine becomes a ion, it becomes a negative one. So potassium is a plus one, and iodine is a negative one. So here, the chlorine will come in and replace the iodine. It's not going to replace the calcium. So here we're going to get KCl. And then it'll be plus I. And I is one of those ones like um, chlorine that needs to be a 2. Okay. So we're going to see KCl plus I2. Then, of course, you got to go through and balance because you have two I's here, only one here. You have two chlorines here, only one here. So we put in the two in front of the Ki and then two in front of the KCl, and now you've got a balanced equation. So in this one, Cl just doesn't replace K because K is the first thing. You have to look at the charges. Okay, double replacement is similar to single replacement, but here you have two compounds that are basically going to repl uh, replace each other. There's going to be two atoms in each compound that kind of switches in the compound. This will be with ionic compounds again because you'll have a positive and negative. Here's the example. You have AX plus BY. A and B switch places. So now A is joined with Y forming AY and B is joined with X forming BX. Okay. So A and B switch, 
Again, you're going to make sure you um, balance your charges uh, when you go through and create new products. So here's your example. You have NaCl plus AgNO3. So here Na as a general will be a plus one, Cl will be a minus one, Ag is a plus one, and NO3 is a minus one. So what's nice here is that they're all ones. We're not going to have to worry about dropping and swapping. What we do need to see is that the Na is a plus one. It is not going to be attracted to Ag that is also a plus one. Uh, positives will repel each other. So the Na must come in and connect with um, NO3. Ag then will connect with Cl. And what we end up getting is we end up getting Na uh, NO3. plus AgCl. No subscripts. Um, the positive ion is written first in every case, and this is already balanced. And there it is just typed in. The next example is AgNO3 plus ZnCl here. We have Ag, which is a plus one always. NO3 is a minus one. Zn, good old zinc, is always a plus two. And then chlorine by itself is a minus one. Remember, these charges are on your periodic tables. So here you're going to see Ag joining with, oh, let me undo that. I don't know how. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, so Ag is going to go to N, uh, to Cl2, and Zn is going to bond here with NO3. So what we end up with is we end up with Ag Cl. Now, if you look, Ag is a plus one, Cl is a minus one. There's not going to be any reason to drop and swap. Then you're going to have plus Zn, but here our Zn's a plus two, our NO3 is a minus one, so we have to put the NO3 in parentheses. Oh, I'm running out of space. Darn it, I ran out of space. Hold on a second. This eraser here. Just make this a little smaller. I'm writing this with my trackpad on my computer on my Mac, so it's not too bad for using Zn N O three two. Ah, I made it. So you'll notice here that we have to drop and swap, and we're going to get a new new subscript. Uh, now it needs balanced, so this is our formula here. We need two NO3s, we need two AGs, and that makes two chlorines, and then we're balanced. So there's your balanced equation. So notice you're creating two new compounds from two previous compounds. All right, the next type is a combustion. This is when you have a hydrocarbon. This is a compound made up of carbon and hydrogen. You'll see things that begin with CH. Now they can have any type of subscript. Sometimes you'll see CH and O as well. Well, that was not very pretty. So you'll see O as well. Um, and it will have any ratio of different subscripts. We did a pro problem in practice on our Zoom lesson that was C6H6. And remember I said that was a combustion reaction. And they always produce carbon dioxide and water. What I love about a combustion reaction is no matter what your reactants are, if it's combustion, it's carbon dioxide and water. So here 
Example would be C6H12O6. This is glucose plus um, O2. As soon as you see that it's combustion because it's a hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, and burning in oxygen, which is O2, you automatically know the answer is CO2 plus H2O. Okay. So there's our products, and then we need to balance it, of course. And it turns out that this will be a 6 in front of the O2, a 6 in front of the CO2, and a 6 in front of the hydrogen, or the water, I'm sorry, H2O. Another example here is C2H5OH. This is considered an alcohol, the OH here. So what you're going to notice is this is a hydrocarbon. Right away, our product is CO2 plus H2O. See? And then again, you need to balance, and this is our balancing. So combustion will be those two types of reactants forming the same two products every time. Then the last type is an acid-base reaction. An acid begins with an H. We learned that in naming. And then a base will be something that ends in an OH. Okay. And what they form is a salt, or in other words, an ionic compound. So this is an ionic compound in water. So here's an example, HCl plus NaOH. The H in the NO, NaOH, remember I said you could write water as HOH when you're balancing, and that's because in an acid base you literally have H and OH joining together. And then the other two things will come together to form the salt, so the Na and Cl. Really, an acid-base reaction is a special type of du uh, double replacement. And it's special because it has a certain type of reactant and product formed every time. So there's the first um, example. The next example would be HF and MgO2. H and OH come together to form the water. And you get MgF2. This needs balanced, so it turns out to be 2HF plus MgOH2, forming magnesium fluoride and water. So, for easy reference, when you're doing your assignments this week, this last slide will come in handy. Um, this gives you what you should look for in order to determine the type of reaction. If it's synthesis, it will have one product on the right side of the equation. If it's decomposition, it will have one reactant on the left side of the equation. If it's single replacement, it will have one element and one compound in both the reactant and product side. If it's double replacement, you will have compounds, two of them as your reactants, and you will have two compounds as your product. For composition or um, combustion, you'll have some carbon uh, hydrogen compound and it will react with O2. You'll have O2 and it will produce CO2 and H2O. And then for your acid base reaction, you'll have one reactant that will have an H as its first letter and the other reactant will end in an OH. So this is um, the six types of reactions that I want you to know. Uh, please make sure you add these notes to your chemistry notebook and reference them while you do the work this week. All right, until we meet again.